All right, so up until this point, uh, we had explored some built-in objects, document, window, console. Uh, then we created one called my car, and then we output a specific property. Well, let's try this. Uh, run it in the browser like I've been doing, and I get these results. And then in the console here, we've got this console where we can type some commands. Let's try this. If you write um, window.inner with, with with a capital W, and then open close, I mean, uh, then uh, semicolon, and then enter, window.inner width, 620, in my case, 620. It's saying that the width of this inner area is 620. If I stretch out my window, type the command again, or the shortcut is in the web browser, if you just press up, it brings back your last command. Press enter. Now it's 1037. If I maximize my screen all the way, and again on the keyboard, if you just press up, it brings back your last command, and then you can press enter. 1280. Obviously, if I shrink the browser like this, and then type the command, it's a lot smaller, 302. I'm saying this to show you that what we've done there, without parentheses, is a property, just like mycar.make did not have parentheses. We had document.write, parentheses, console.log, parentheses. But we had my car dot make without parentheses. So this is a property with no parentheses. And it is a method when it has parentheses. So in my notes, if I have something that looks like, you know, my object dot something, that's a property. But if I have my object, dot something else, parentheses, that is a method. And I said earlier that methods describe something, and methods are something that you do. So we've created an object, but it doesn't do anything yet. It's just full of properties. We have a car that has these properties, but we haven't programmed the car to accelerate or decelerate or anything like that. So that's why you would see that we had my card at make. We were just retrieving a property. If we invent a method of my car, then we would use it or we would call it, we would invoke it. My object dot something parentheses. We can make more than one object. So actually, let's make a different object right here. Uh, we can work with car. Uh, again, sure. Let's make another one. And I'm just writing these completely in sequence, but if we were writing our real code, we would kind of structure our code, perhaps in a nicer way. But I'm just writing everything in sequence. For the moment, that's okay for us. So on the next line, let's say I'm going to create another variable. And this variable, this object, is going to be person. We're going to see what are the properties that define a person. So. I'm going to say that the person is defined by a last name. And then we can use yourself an example, as an example. So last name property, first name property, um, suppose age, this will be a number. Another property here. Let's say I, I want to have my uh, my height. Uh, age is obviously just a number uh, that is easily displayed. When we dealt with speed, okay, is that 65 miles per hour? Is that 65 kilometers? It needed units. Well, now I'm going to deal with with height. And with my height, I want to do it in the you know U.S. method. I want to do feet and inches. So I'm going to create a property called height ft to delineate feet, 5, and then 
uh, height i n inches, and it will delineate inches. So every property that I am adding to this object, notice that it's separated by a comma until the final one. There's no terminating, there's no final comma. It's the last item, and then we'll see that it is terminated right there. And so property, 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 comma, 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 and then the last one, it's the final property, so no final comma. Some languages have you put a comma on all of them, uh, on all items in a series, but not JavaScript. So this is not anything new at all than what we did a moment ago. What will be new is now I want to create uh, a, a method here about an action to do something. My action will be that I want to combine feet and height into a nice readable format because I would like to display on screen or in the console. Victor Campos is 38 years old and 5 foot 10 inches. I want to display that as a nice simple real kind of sentence. And it's just a bunch of properties at the moment. So with a method, we will do something. We will combine the disseparate height and feet into one unit. So now I will add a comma because I'm adding a new item to my object. This, uh, this here will be, we'll call this, this will be our method of um, total height. Syntax is the same in that I have a colon here, but now where it's very different is I'll write function. That is a keyword that is a reserved JavaScript. Open and close um, parentheses, space, open and close curly brace. This is the syntax to create a method. We have the method of log for the console object. We have the method of write for the document object. Now we're going to create a method called total height for the person object. So uh, don't write this because this is invalid, but if we then wrote person dot last name, it would show my last name. If we were to write person dot total height parentheses, it would run the function, it would run, it would use the method that I am about to define to display or to do something. Log, dot log, does something, dot write, does something, dot alert, does something. Now, dot total height will do something. And notice the syntax of it, the way we have to write it. That's what syntax is, the way you write the language. <coughs> Uh, that keyword function will come up many times as we go on, but um, I think I said it over on my notes. Function, a series of statements bundled together. So I want to accomplish several steps. If we were to pull back the curtain deep down in the levels of the, you know, the, in the deepest levels of the web browser, dot log is made up of a bunch of mini commands, which the end result is display that message in the console. For us, we're going to define what total height does. So actually, I'm going to break these curly braces into multiple lines. We can keep it on one line again, like I said, but uh, if we break it up, it'll be easier to read. Between those curly braces, line 33, I want to combine 5 feet 10 inches. I want to combine some numbers and some letters. So within this function, I will create a variable. I will create another container, something else to hold what I'm trying to build. And this we can call um, feet inches. This will be feet and inches together. This container will hold both the feet and inches. Right now, they are separate. Equals the assignment operator. Feet inches will represent. We've got a height, and we've got, we've got height in feet and height in inches. 
And as we get more complex with JavaScript, we may reuse the age property or the age variable, the person variable. We may reuse our code, and sometimes that can cause a conflict. Well, let's say I, I'm, I'm always cognizant and I always you know, choose new names of properties and variables. But what if you're also using a JavaScript library? Or what about if you're using someone else's JavaScript code? And that person used certain variable names that conflict with your variable names. So we have to specify that we want to deal with the height in feet and inches of this object, because we can have more than one object, but we need this object, height and feet and inches. So we'll say this dot height feet space plus quotes and I'll write here uh, ft dot space. I wanted to say five foot space 10 inch. I want to combine all of that together in one unit. Further plus space this dot height in plus space quotes in dot at the end of that line semicolon point of this function is to do something very simply to combine these two separate values. They're going to be stored in this variable, this object. It's made out of whatever height is listed here, plus the word foot, and whatever inches are listed there, plus the word inch. Combine all of that, put it in this variable. And because these functions, these methods, do something, give some kind of result. Next line, I will return feet inches. I may have invented something that will calculate the area of a square. Well, that's a multiplication of a width and a height. So I want that result and I want it returned so I can use that result. 5 times 10 is 50. I want to use that result. So I'm doing return here. Notice this becomes blue. It's a keyword of JavaScript, just like function. Uh, do this calculation, so to speak, and then return the result. So I've created a person. I have all of these properties. I have a method to actually use that. Then next line. This time we'll show it on screen. Document.write. We'll say user, oops, in, in quotes, user space plus last name, <coughs> or first name, space plus last name. You might see what, what's about to happen, but we'll do it. Last name, space plus, is, in quotes, is, space plus, you see what I'm trying to show here is, the first name property, the last name property, the age property, etc. But I didn't specify what object, did I? Person dot first name. Person dot last name. I may have more than one object. Which object do I mean? Which property? These properties are sort of locked inside that object. So now if I do this dot notation, there's the object. There's the property. Person dot age. 
Let's see what it looks like so far. It's not going to be correct just yet. Sometimes you'll see that I do things on purpose wrong. You can see the result. But uh, let's kind of see where we're going here because, again, JavaScript, as I said, HTML, easy. CSS, not so easy. JavaScript, hard. So whenever we do any of this console output or pause to check our code, that's going to help us in the long term to make sure we write our code properly. I'm going to double check my code here. my results so far. It's getting there. Obviously, they've still got problems. It still has the previous code, and therefore my, it's running into here. Whoops, I forgot to put a space between my names, and I need to do the rest. So this is what I'm saying. We could write, we could write our whole code, but it's good to stop once in a while and check what we've got so far. So I want to fix this, that it goes onto its own line. I want to fi put, fix this by putting a space in my name, and then I can continue. I need a new line, so... Break. So I might even break tag first, and then starting the string. Concatenation, which just adds more to the string. Here's my string so far, my text. Add whatever first name is. Add whatever last name is. Never mentioned a space, so it didn't do a space. So if I want to do a space, then I would do it like this. Person, first name, plus, space, quote, space, quote, space, plus. See that? Building the string. Add a space, continue the string. That's why that space is there and there. Is dot age years old? I want to continue the sentence. That's the plus. We're adding more to the string. Quotes space years old and this is the part where I'm going to show the height. Remember the height is in two units but I created a method to combine them both. Before I do that let me just check this line is working okay. Looks good. Cut those spaces in there, etc. We'll pause for help in a moment. Um, that's building it up right there. Plus space. I have total height, which combines the total height. I want to display that result. I want to use that method. So person dot total height. in parentheses. It's a method. It's not a property like the other ones. It's a method. It's a method because it says function, blah, 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 blah. It's a series of steps. If I did not put those parentheses, you get a really cool result. All of the original code. With parentheses, it processes that statement and it combined those properties and the text and so forth. And is, should put is, and is 5 foot 10. And is 10. We could have crafted the 5 foot 10 part with a bunch of pluses and concatenation and such, but I want to set it up so that simply total height does the hard work for me, right, right back there. This, this sentence. If I didn't have the total height method, I'd have to write something like this over here, and I'm simply writing total height. 
And the point of this, using objects as we get more complex, is uh, you know eventually I'm going to have a birthday, and then that object will change, and then the result will change as well. So the object changes, and then the, the code implements the changes. But we're not there yet. Let's pause here. Did everyone get something like this, that it displays your person object? Anyone need a little help?
All right, everyone, let's go on. Um, so I talked to several people, a lot of little different kind of errors here and there, and we're just kind of seeing it in different ways. One common error that I saw was that, uh, yeah, it did look a little weird. I forgot to mention it, but uh, yeah, we do have two closing parentheses here. Okay, everyone, if you're going to help each other out, that's good, but if you do it at a reasonable volume, please, because the lecture's going on. So it does look a little odd right here in that there are two closing parentheses, but actually no, because what I like about Notepad is if you click on an object, it often shows you its, its counterpart. Here I had the opening and closing parentheses for total height, and I do need one more parenthesis because that closes the opening of right. So uh, for a couple of people, uh, you, are missing a, you are missing one there and it's giving you an error because you don't have a closing uh, parenthesis. Uh, what I also noticed for a few people, capitalization does matter. I, I think I forgot, it, forgot to say it for JavaScript, but capitalization does matter. So if I call this height feet, and over here I call it capital height, capital feet, that won't work because capitalization matters. So if I had an uppercase and a lowercase, make sure that it's an uppercase and a lowercase at all times. Um, so, uh, the, um, the result would be undefined. It says, well, I don't know what height feet is. We never defined it. And I say, yeah, we did. It's right there, five. No, it's lowercase h, uppercase h. That is different. Unfortunately, um, with Notepad, it's not smart enough for this, but 
if you select uh, last name, for example, it'll highlight all instances of last name throughout your code. If I double click console, it highlights all instances of console, of var, whatever. That's, that's cool. What it's not smart enough, unfortunately, is it doesn't know the difference of cases. So I highlighted height, and they both highlighted, but it's not differentiating between heights, which one is right and one is wrong. Um, so I use this all the time in, I'm trying to debug my code, what went wrong? I always go back and check my variables. Did I type them properly? I just simply double click, they highlight everywhere, and then I can look at my code. And then also look at your console. I'm going to say that so many times to people. What does your console say? You might call me for help. What does your console say? Unfortunately, this kind of error here is not going to give us a console output because it's not a syntax error, it's a logic error. There's no real syntax error between capital height and lowercase height. But the console is going to help us debug. All right, so we've started to do all of this regarding uh, the syntax. How do we write uh, JavaScript? The concept of objects will do much more of this, of course. Here's an object with some properties and a method. We won't do events at the moment. That's more complex. Uh, I want to then talk about some other basic concepts of JavaScript. Before we go on, any kind of general questions on what we've done so far? We're still barely on step zero, so if you have a step 10 question, we'll get to it eventually. But any questions at this point? General questions? Yes? Is this mainly just so you can modify the variable, all the variables that you're creating as opposed to... Because what, what we're... our output is something that you can type in regular HTML and like the lines. But is the reason we're using JavaScript so that we can modify the variables or use the variables there? We use JavaScript basically as a way to create an algorithm. An algorithm is a series of steps to accomplish a task. We could write everything that we've written here in plain old HTML, but it would be static. What we're doing here is using JavaScript so that we can create something dynamic, because later on we can write more JavaScript to create our algorithm, which will dynamically capture this information. What if it asks the user, please enter your last name, first name, age, and height? So it'll then capture all that information, save it to a database, for example, and then retrieve it when necessary. We won't be able to do that with plain old HTML. It's not built for that. It's not built for interactivity. That's why we're using JavaScript. Very basically right now, but a more advanced way to be dynamic. So um, we're going to touch a little bit on that of storing more information. Uh, we're going to talk about an array. An array is a collection of data. I said back here on our notes, an array is a variable full of variables. Somewhat like an object, but we'll see the difference. And in a sense, a variable, I mean, an array is a very, very, very basic database. If you think about a database, it's a collection of information. Sort of, the sign-in sheet here is sort of a database. It has uh, these columns and rows of information. A column of student names and a particular student. A column of your time in and particular data. And a column of your amount of time here and the data. This is kind of a database. Uh, a digital database is similar in that it's going to collect a series of data. But a digital database, we can add data to it, retrieve data from it, modify data in it, delete data in it. Those are all the basic operations of a database. Um, we're not quite to databases yet, of course, but via an array we can sort of save a little bit more complex data. My ultimate goal for a little bit of practice here is I'm gonna set up a uh, list of like my top five favorite films. So that's information I'm gonna save in an array I'm going to store these different bits of data in an array, then I'm going to retrieve the data and display it on screen. We're seeing that via document write, we have a very rudimentary way to display data on screen, and we have to remember to put breaks and all of that. Well, 
let's introduce this concept that we, we use over and over of having some sort of placeholder on screen which then we will dynamically put data into it. Right now we have to create, we have to use document right to create the data at the, display the data. But what if we have a placeholder and then we'll put the data into the screen? So we'll back up to our code and we'll back up to the HTML part before script. And um, because we're all doing it embedded actually, um, it won't be in the order exactly that I want. That's okay. Let's say new line h2 and we'll say my five favorite films. Next line, we'll create another tag. We didn't talk about this one previously. This is the div tag. Div is a generic HTML container. It's a division in the document. It's just a container. It's kind of like a variable in JavaScript. Not really, but it's a variable. It's a container in HTML. It can hold something. It's transparent. It can hold something. It's going to hold a list of my favorite films. So, I'm going to break this, actually, into separate lines. And inside of the div, we will create the ol block. Remind me, because I'm teaching two JavaScript classes at once. Did we, I mean HTML, did we talk about ordered list last time? Yes, okay. First day, okay. Ordered list, so it's bullet points. But with numbers, it's in order. And there's going to be a list item on each of these. Five of them. I'll copy and paste. So my basic structure is a division here, content, ordered list. So it'll be ordered from one to five. Nothing in the list here yet. <clears throat> but I'm building up this structure, and notice because of the order I wrote it. This appears before my other code. Maybe conceptually I want it afterward, so I'd have to write this code, this div code, after script, but then I'd need a new script block. Again, we're kind of basic at this point. It'd be better if we had an external JavaScript, but for the moment, this is okay. We've built a, a list. We're going to populate that list with um, data in uh, JavaScript, data that we're holding in an array. So we're going to uh, go back into our script block at the very end. Let me give myself a couple of spaces, uh, or enters, that is. Uh, and uh, just kind of like as a comment, you saw that double slash creates a comment on that line. That's one way to comment. Another way to comment is if you do slash asterisk slash. That sounds familiar. We did that for commenting in CSS. So that multi-line CSS comment also works in JavaScript. This is a multi-line comment. You don't have to write this. Multi-line comment. And then this is single line comment. This is going to cause an error because the single line comment is for a single line. The 
the comment stops right there. This thinks then it's valid, valid JavaScript, which it's not, which it'll give me an error. This is now a single commented line. So if you want to do multiple lines commented, each line needs the double slash, or start your comment and end your comment. Like that. This is comment stuff. Um, what I wanted to do was just to simply write a comment down here about uh, top five films code. Because I've got code that does other stuff above there, and then what follows is my code for this top five films, five favorite films, whatever we called it. We can write comments within our code to delineate what our code is about. Optional, but very useful, especially when it's color-coded, because you can quickly then see sections of your hundreds of lines of code. Eventually, we're going to end up with our, with our app, which is going to be about a thousand lines of code, which you know means it's a very small app. So then, what we're actually then going to do here is create another variable, another object. This one is going to be called uh, films. Let's stay in the same idiom, my films. Oftentimes, I put some sort of like my films or the variable or you know, I, I name it in a way not like a basic word because there are so many basic keywords in JavaScript that are reserved. So if I'm trying to create an array of my writings and I create a variable called write, that might conflict with a, with a built-in keyword of JavaScript. I often find personally that to avoid that is to put some sort of little marker or delineator to make a unique <coughs> word because we know we have a uh, document as a as a reserved word. If I called it my document, now it's a new word. It's not the original reserved word, so it works. Space equals this time square brackets. We had curly brackets when we created an object which had properties and methods and events. An object is a complex thing. An array actually is one level below of complexity. Maybe we should have done arrays first. But the object is more complex. It's in curly brackets. The array is a little simpler, and it's in square brackets. And this is basically then a simple list of data, which could either be strings, numbers, booleans, or objects in here too, or arrays. I could put arrays inside of arrays. Collections of data inside of collections of data. That sounds like a database to me. We'll do it very simply though, and have a sequence here of five films. These are going to be strings. So here you can write whatever of your favorite uh, movies you want. Let's say Star Wars, of course, comma, so I'm going to choose from the Matrix, comma, Leon, comma, uh, Akira, and one more, Spice World. So a bunch of films that are the best, and uh, we're going to use those to populate our our, uh, our ordered list. Before we get to that point, we saw that if we did some console log output for person, it would show the data of that object. Well, if you're curious, and you should be, what about if we do console log of my films? So, I've uh, created an object, it's an array, 
an array is a simpler kind of an object than the one we worked with before. It's just a list of items. Um, but they are actual they actually are uh, properties and values. We saw that with car, there's a property of color and a value of blue, a property of make and a value of Ford, and a property of speed and a value of 65. Arrays do have uh, properties and values. The value is your first item, and the value is the second one, and so forth. So the values are your items in, in sequence. The properties are the index, because I want to display the second item in my array. So logically, console.log my films. Logically, when we worked with car or person, we did dot the name of the property, which we have last name or make. But we have no properties, per se, on an array. We have nothing to, to latch on to as a property to display the value. All of those are values. The way in an array that we do it is, not with the dot, but with square brackets, and we say the index value in order. You know, the first item, the second item, the third item, fourth and fifth. So okay, I want the second item here, so I'll put a 2. I want the second item. So logically then, obviously I would get the matrix, right? It won't work because it's called console. Console. That's the variant variation name. So, if you spell it right, and you put number two. I want the second item, so one, two, the matrix. Whoops, I get Leon. What happened? Oh, because it starts from zero. Starts from zero. The array starts counting from zero. In computer science, we usually start counting from zero, not one. Natural numbers are one, two, three. But in most computer contexts, we start counting from zero. So, zero, one, two. So the computer did exactly what I told it. Again, very dumbly, it did number two. I meant item number two, and it said, okay, you mean index two. Zero, one, two. No, I wanted the second item. So, what should it be? Zero, one. That'll make the second item. So that's what the property is in an array. What index number? Zero with index, first index, second index, third index, fourth index, which is the fifth item. So if I wanted then the fifth movie from my array, I would put four, starting from zero. The result then is that movie. If I had said the fifth item, hmm, undefined. There is no sixth item in the array. There's no fifth index. Zero, one, two, three, four, undefined. There's no definition there. <coughs> we never defined it. Yeah. Mine didn't come up, I'm covering up one. All right, just one moment. What is our code so far? With an array, we retrieve the value. Then what we'll do is we'll display it on screen. Yes. So console.log is not a function. Online.
Is the console object? All right, so we've got this array with some movies inside of it. Uh, we're seeing that we can pull the data out of it. This is a different way to do it. We're saying the index number. Uh, so then what I want to do is display that on screen. And we will see, again, we've got many ways to do this. Um, here's one way just to show you a possibility. We've got these list items and we um, want to replace those empty numbers with the numbers of uh, with the value of my movie. So we are able to reference the objects that are in the HTML 
in JavaScript and then manipulate them in, H in JavaScript. JavaScript can manipulate existent HTML. So if we want to target a specific item in the list, let's back up to the, L, the first li, line 12. We'll add an attribute of an ID equals quotes. We talked about IDs when we talked about CSS. JavaScript actually makes use of IDs and classes. We will see this many times as we go on throughout our projects. Um, let's say ID MOV1. Doing this allows me to write some JavaScript to target this one element in HTML and to then put a movie in that slot. Let's get back to the JavaScript. At the very end, var, call this el movie one equals. We're going to create an object, a variable, element movie one. This is our first object. And it's going to be based on this bullet point up here, which I called movie one, which has an ID that identifies it. So equals document dot. So we're saying that in the document object, we're going to use the get element by ID method. Notice how it's very specifically spelled. Get capital E, capital B, capital I. And this is a big beginner mistake. Only capital I, not capital I, capital D. That would make way too much sense. This would make way more sense. It's just capital I, lowercase d. So we're saying, use the get element by ID method in the document. Let's get, let's refer to, let's deal with or manipulate a particular element in HTML by an ID. So in the parentheses, in quotes, the name of the ID, which we called mov1, movie1, one, mov1. One. End of the line, semicolon. Okay, the point of this. Here now, we've created an object that refers to an element of HTML. Now we can use all of our hundreds of possible JavaScript commands to manipulate that. Next line. elMovie1 dot text content, capital C, equals my films brackets semicolon item zero. For the object lmovie one, let's change the text content property, fill it with my films array zero with item Star Wars. Put Star Wars in list item one. Save it and run it. Number one. It's zero with item of the array. Put it into this element. This element is whatever is ID one in my HTML. Okay. Yes. What is L movie one? L movie one. If I double click it so it highlights it in the code, we created a variable, an object called L movie one. And it's filled with, or it refers to, some element in our HTML document called mov1. mov1, if I double click that, goes back up here, is our ID for that list item. 
So now we've referred to an HTML element that exists in the body, and via JavaScript we've changed its text content, which is currently empty. There's nothing inside of those angle brackets. But now we've said change that text content to whatever is my zeroth item of the array. Again, there's many ways to do this. This is one way. We'll look at a variety of different ways to do the same thing because some ways are perhaps more efficient. This way, I think, makes a lot of sense for a beginner. This way is actually kind of a kind of a long-ish way to do it, but as a beginner, I think this is a good way to do it. So I want to populate the other items in, in the list here. So I'm going to need to give these other ones a unique ID. I'm going to need to create elements for them and then I'm going to need to change the text content for each of them. Again, slightly long way, but I, I think it's good practice to see this concept. So let's back up to where we've got our um, list items. Each one of these is going to need an ID equals moth2. Maybe a little copy and paste here to save yourself some effort. Each one is a unique ID, so three and four and five. Remember IDs can only be used once per document. If we named all of these MOV1, it may or may not work, but it shouldn't because it's not standards compliant. IDs should only be used once. When you say, what about if we use classes? That could work, but recall we're using the method get element by ID. Maybe we have something called get element by class. Maybe. But for the moment, we're using IDs, a unique identifier. We can put an ID attribute to any code we want anywhere. Then that means we can use JavaScript to, to manipulate any HTML or CSS if we can refer to it. In short, this is a reference. This object is a reference. It's not actually taking the code in the HTML portion and putting it into LMovie really, it's, put, it's giving us a pointer, a reference to that code that exists up there. And then we're changing that object. Yes, I'm going to need to then create an LMovie1 object and a 2 and a 3 and a 4 and a 5. A little copy and paste will help us here. Um, we could do this. Don't do this yet, but we could do this. We could copy and paste that five times and change each one as necessary. Okay, that's one way. We could instead to save ourselves a little bit of typing, we could do it this way. I'm getting at that there's many ways to do the same thing. Here, I've used the var keyword once. I didn't put it anywhere else over here because I've said use var to create that movie one, comma, and use var one to create L movie two, comma, and use it to create L movie three, so forth, so forth, until the last one, I'm done, semicolon that var then is done. That's a variation if, if I had done var for each one of these. You might say that's, that's not a big difference at all, although notice the syntax is different. Each one of these is a terminating statement, is a complete statement, so I need to put a comma for each of them. Well, each one of these is three plus empty space, each one of these is four bytes four and four and four and four. Sixteen bytes that I wasted, perhaps. And uh, it's just a byte, but they add up. So that's one way right there, or the way that I'm having here. Although, you look at the nuance. No vars here, but they have to have commas at the end here until the final one. And then here, well, we're talking about L movie object one, and then 
two, and then three, and then four. All of these are, we're editing the text content property, and then we're dealing with the zero with item, the first index, the second index, the third index, and the fourth index. Three twice? Oh, there we go. Three, five. Yes, there are of course time time savers. There are of course shortcuts. Perhaps as a beginner, we do it the long way just to kind of get the concept, and we'll get shortcuts. We'll do shortcuts. We create an object for each one of those unique elements. And then we're changing each one of those objects individually. One question. Mm -hmm. I thought we use the same call instead of comma for each one of those. Say that again. How can we use a semicolon? A semicolon? These are complete statements. Up here we were borrowing var to create each of these objects. Here we're not creating any objects, we're doing something. Just like there's nothing in front of console, this is simply doing the statement, giving the command. We've got an element, it's text property, text content property, let's change it to this, the end. We've got another object, its property, let's change it to this value, the end, and so forth. So all of them is a complete statement. I showed these in sequence in my uh, array. I've got them in this order from 0 to 4, and I just wrote them 0 to 4. But if I wanted to put them in the correct order of the number one best movie, of course, then I would simply put the index uh, in the right place, and then we get the number one movie. To here? So we can change that index in the brackets to refer to any item. So I don't change these, of course, because I'm still dealing with list item 1, list item 2, 3, 4, 5. I don't change those. But what do I put in those list items? That's what I'm changing from my array. Okay, let's take one more break, and uh, let's check if our code's working here. It's 8.40, we'll take a break until 8.50, then when we come back we'll explore arrays a little bit more. We'll be back at 8.50.